time of day, aka Todd. But I'm going to do the basics here and uh, try to shed some light on some things. So, intraday, there are three principal sessions, obviously, for the currency market. There's Asia, there's London, and New York. All right, and each one of these has a different little character about them. Now, there's a couple of things that go on. You've got to remember, I'm going to refer today, since we're trading London, yeah, I'm going to refer today more towards the, I'm going to gear this more towards the London market, but really everything can slide across and be applicable to New York and Asia alike. Now, Asia is a little bit different because, you know, you've got Tokyo opening and then you got the, or you got Sydney and then you got Tokyo. You got, it's not a, it's not an absolute sort of time of day where you get these big stock market influx of money. Where New York, I mean, check that London, you know, starts at 8 a.m. London, which is midnight for me, Pacific, or 3 a.m. Eastern. You just know that that is the to the minute influx of money. Banks are opening, they're doing business, etc. You know, yes, you have the Frankfurt open at at sort of 7 a.m. London and, um, you know, and you have the Middle East opening up a little bit earlier than that. But the 8 a.m. London mark is still, to me, the opening of the market for the day. All right, and obviously Forex is a 25-hour mark. We're not disputing that. But that 8 a.m. time is so definite that, you know, the, the thing with time of day is that basically this. Traders around the world want to do a couple of things principally or should at least buy low and sell high irrespective of trend all right the magnitude of the move will be determined by the trend so for example if you're at resistance within the context of a downtrend at a major market open you're going to see a precipitous drop where if you at support within the context of a major downtrend you're going to see a shorter rise but you're likely to still see a rise in price despite being in the context of the longer term downtrend all right you're just going to see a more short-lived trade and a smaller range to the upside than what you would okay so the principal idea here with time of day is that traders want to traders get to the chart at the same time they want to buy low and sell high irrespective of trend and this collective influx of money is a very powerful indicator for what to do for that particular day. So even at FX Bootcamp, I gear my whole session around this. Right, we'll do our analysis. You know, I'll start two hours before London, an hour and a half before London. We'll do our analysis. We'll look at all the different pairs, gauge it, a few definite trade plans for the day. But then we shut our trap and look to trade the market open, or at least shut out trap I mean I shut my my trap a little bit and look to trade the open you know that first sort of 45 minutes of London and without too much distraction so because that is what is potentially the high or the low for that day all right or there and thereabouts so that market open is what you're looking for to trade from all right and there's a couple of patterns now do you know, is this an absolute, what I'm going to show you now? Mm, no, I mean, it's, look, there's a couple of, <clears throat> there's obviously exceptions to it, but you're going to see this more times than not in the market. All right, if we have New York, okay, and I'm talking about New York, you know, and there's some nuances here, which I'm probably not going to go into in this video. We'll talk about them at a later date. New York, Asia, London, New York. All right. So I'll label them New York, Asia, London. And when I talk about London, and when I talk about London here, I'm talking about this is the eight. AM London mark, which at the moment when I'm doing this GMT is London. So 8 AM GMT, which is 3 AM, or it's actually 4 AM right now because of the daylight savings switch. But typically it's 3 AM Eastern, 12 Pacific. 
all right? <clears throat> and then, you know, the Asia Open, I like to consider AD and Tokyo, but it's more like 9.30 for me. Asia's a little bit more of a soft open. What I mean by that is it's a range of time. Where London is an absolute, all right? And New York, obviously the stock market opens when it opens, but it, the money starts to come into the market here right around sort of 7 a.m., right? And then you'll get the news at 8.30 and some things, Eastern now, all right? But this is 8 a.m. London, and we're going to concentrate on this, okay? So there's a couple of patterns here, and the one is as follows. If New York has taken the market down for that day, all right, and then we pull back at the beginning of Asia to a red zone of this drop, Asia is likely to come in and go, well, hang on, New York took us down the previous day. Remember, when you look at your charts, at least I do, the first thing I look at is what the previous day or session has done. And my immediate inclination is to want to do what they did. So if they sold, I would preferably like to sell. And if they buy, I'd like to buy probably, if it makes sense, obviously. All right, and I'm not the only trader that thinks like that. So I'm not a contrarian. Being a contrarian and trading is not always the best idea. But anyway, so if we open after a New York drop at resistance on the, in Asia, you know, this might be the daily central pivot typically or a fib of the drop, etc. Chances are Asia is going to want to sell this. Okay, and you'll generally short down, and actually I'm going to undo that one momentarily, and you'll short down, and what you'll see is right around sort of 6.35 to 6.45 a.m. Uh, London time, you'll see a little continuation here, called, I like to call it the pre-London continuation, and this is actually typically a very tradable event. This is sort of a typically about a 30 or 40 pip move on the euro or the euro yen that you can capitalize on. It's definitely a scalp, but you can capitalize on that three times a week probably. All right, you've got to make sure that it makes sense technically, but it's not a particularly difficult setup to capture. All right, then 8 a.m. London opens, and even though the trend has been down, you're starting the day, you know, this might be S2 here, you're starting the day basically extended. You're starting the day essentially at the end of your daily range relative to where New York started. What is likely to happen? London is likely to push this market up irrespective of the trend. Okay? Then, for this, this is the first sort of two hours of London, and then you'll see a continuation after London lunch. However, New York opens, and now we essentially had a move fib of the entire drop from where New York started the previous day, and as a result, New York trades you to the downside. Okay? And this is sort of the general model that I'll watch day in day out. You might need to watch that again to sort of get it, all right? Now, there's certain variations of this. Okay, let me elaborate. All right, now let's say, the, obviously, the equal and opposite is as follows, and I'll go quickly. New York takes you up. Asia opens at support. You then trade up in Asia. Pre-London kicks in around 6.45 London time. That continues you up. You then open London net resistance. They then push you down to a fib of the entire rise. All right, you get a quick continuation. Then New York opens that support, and New York takes you up. All right. Now, everything slides across a little bit. Okay, let me give you an example here. If we, and it's going to get, it's going to get fairly messy here. So, uh, we'll change colors. Okay. Now what happens if what happens if you <clears throat> New York takes the market up, but you don't really open Asia at support. You open Asia closer to resistance. Okay? So in other words, you know, in this pink model here you open New York took you up, but you open Asia at support and as a result they took you up. Well, what happens if you open at resistance? Chances are they're going to trade you down to support, buy low, sell high. So when the influx of money is happening, it's happening at resistance. Well, then London comes in and goes, well, hang on. We at a move fib green zone of the New York rise. 
and London goes, thanks very much. We're going to trade us to the upside. All right. Then New York might come in and go, well, hang on, we had a double top. Short momentarily to a green zone of the London rise and then continue the trade to the upside. It's a slight variation. It's a slight variation of where we were. So instead of Asia starting at support, we started resistance and traded to support. Then you open London at support and then trade it up towards the double top. New York will trade the continuation of that. It's very seldom that you're going to get three sessions in a row trading in the same direction. It happens, but probably twice a month. And those are obviously those beautiful big trending days and you've broken all the support, you've broken all the resistance and off you go. All right, those do happen. But it, they're less likely during the, they're less likely, all right? So then, you know, the flip side of this, and it's gonna, like I said, this is gonna get a little weird here, but um, I'll just change colors. Oh, we'll use red. All right, so what's the reciprocal of this? New York trades the market to the downside. Asia opens that support, trades you back to the resistance of this drop. London kicks in, trades the market down towards the double bottom. If not a lower low, you'll get sort of an immediate pullback and then a nice continuation for New York. And I know this is complicated. You might need to watch it a couple of times. All right, but that is basically the model for time of day, day in and day out. All right, and you'll see, let me show you this. This is a quick indicator that shows the different sessions for the day. And the orange one is London, right? So the pink area here is Asia. When we switch to orange, that is London mark. And we go to blue, that is the New York mark. All right, and one thing I'd like you to notice here is and I haven't manipulated anything yet. This is 8 a.m. London here, all right, for the last two days. Notice how the exact open of the market has turned out to be an exact open of the market has turned out to be the high and the low for the day, right? And then you know, New York opens at resistance, going back some, opening at support today at about 20 minutes after the open the high and this is a day in and day out occurrence of the major market open this is a bust here on this on this uh, on this one yeah this was the low for the day but didn't really go anywhere but you can see a high percentage of the time you're going to open the market at support or at resistance and that is going to be proving to be the high or the low for the day. So if you're going to speculate on something, on a direction, follow the immediate opening of the day. You'll be surprised how many times that that proves to be the major market position for that day as long as it makes technical sense. And that is our brief discussion on time of day. In the future, I'm going to talk about the actual nuances of the London session in terms of when you likely to get your initial direction, when you likely to get your pullbacks, what those are going to look like, the magnitude of those moves, and I'll talk about that in future videos. If you have any questions, you can reach me, david at fxbootcamp.com. You can reach me on my Twitter at forexdavid or uh, on my Facebook if you're so inclined. Always enjoy your comments on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like what's going on here. Thumbs up the video. Leave me a comment. Uh, I read all of them. Thanks very much, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.